Hello, people of Earth, Jupiter, Wisconsin, and Wyoming. <laughs> um, my name is Chris Krasnuski, and I'd like to welcome you to an episode of How the Hell Did I Do That? <laughs> okay, I know the title isn't exactly the best, but hey, it's better than, you know, Chris's tutorials or something, uh, or something else that's really cheesy or overused, but... <clears throat> okay. Um, what this is going to be about is, it's hopefully going to be a series of tutorials in 3D Studio Max, Adobe After Effects, and hopefully both programs. Um, like switching between the two of them as well. Um, but, um, for today's tutorial, it's going to be about the basics of creating a space scene in 3D Studio Max. And, um, today what we're going to be covering is... Planets, stars, m yeah, not moons. Um, okay, yeah, moons too. <laughs> Planets, stars, moons, nebula, and some lighting techniques that we can use. So, okay, let's get started. The first thing we need in a space scene are stars. So, let's get to it. Uh, in your environment and effects menu, we're going to open that up, and then we're also going to open up our material editor. Drag this over. Now, in the environment menu, click the None tab on the environment map, and we're going to create a noise map. This is the first method that I like to use of creating stars. Now what we want to do is we want to drag our, our noise map into an empty material slot, choose Instance, we're going to make the size of the noise really small, like 0.2. And then for the noise threshold, we're going to make it high, 0.8, and low threshold, 0.7. Now, let's have a quick render. I'm going to set my render settings to HD 1920 by 1080, so you guys can see. As you can see, those are some pretty decent looking stars. There's another way to do this, and that's free. And you can use it through third party plugins as well. So I'm going to clear this map, and I'll show you. There's a plugin available, and again, this is free, called KY Milky Way. Now, this is a rendering effect that allows us to create stars in our scenes. And, um,. I think it's a lot more effective than just creating an environment map. So I'm going to tweak a few settings here. Bring this down to 0.5. Give it about 20,000 stars. I like this method better because you have more control over your stars and what they look like. Now I'm not going to get too much into all these, but um, I will provide a link in the description for the website from where you can get this plugin and a couple of others as well, like KY Trails. Um, I think there's another one that deals with depth of field, but uh, I'm not sure about that entirely. Um, so now I'm going to render this again. As you can see, there are more stars here that look pretty cool. So the next thing we want to add in now is a nebula effect. So I'm going to go to environment map and create another noise map. And I'm going to drag this into another empty material slot as an instance. One thing, instance, instance, bleh, instancing a material <laughs> will affect any other instance of said material. So as you can see, this says map to, this says map to, so anything you do in this material will affect the map in here. So if you chose copy, it wouldn't be the same, so just keep that in mind, fellow Max users. Alright, I'm going to leave the size of this the same. Now oh, you know what, maybe I'll cut it down to half, 12.5, and set this to fractal, levels to 10. I'm going to make this a blue color. I like blues. Now I'm going to drag the value of this color down a bit. I'm 
just so we can get a just so we can get a very dark kind of nebula here. That looks pretty cool to me. So that's it for our stars and nebula. Now we're going to make a planet and a moon to go with it. So I'll minimize these three windows. What we're going to do is we're going to create a geosphere. We're going to make it pretty big. Now, the reason we use a geosphere instead of a sphere is because geospheres are supposed to be huge. They're designed to be huge. And we'll give this 20 segments. So, oops. So here we have our geosphere. And let's go back to the material editor. I already have a couple of pre-made maps here. And um, I'll provide a download link for these maps in the description. So, so I'm going to drag this Dantooine map into an into an unused material slot. Wait for it. There we go. Okay. And hit apply. Now here's our planet. But it needs a bit of tweaking. I'm going to set the diffuse color to black. And in the maps rollout, drag the spec map into the specular level slot. I'm going to reduce the specular level. No, not the specular level, the glossiness down to 50. As you can see in the material editor here. You can see that's pretty effective. And you know what, I'll, I'll bring it down to 40. You know, maybe maybe even 30. That looks good, 30's, 30 looks good, so. And finally we're going to have our bump map into the bump slot. Let's add a bit of detail to the, to the planet and its surface. And now what we need to do is we need to create clouds for this planet. So, right click and clone this as a copy. I'm going to name this Clouds. Then we're going to scale it up some. Ever so slightly. Now back in our material editor, what we're going to do is we're going to go for a new material slot, change the diffuse color to completely white, set the self-illumination to 10, and back in our texture maps, drag this into the opacity slot, and then apply to our cloud sphere. Now our planet has some pretty cool looking clouds. We can also drag this into the, into the uh, bump map. But we don't want the bump settings to be too high, so I'm going to set this to 5. And finally, what we're going to do is we're going to create an atmosphere for our planet. So, clone, copy, and we'll name this Atmosphere. Or Atmos. And we'll drag this up ever so slightly as well. We're going to make this color blue because it's an Earth similar planet. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create a fall off material. Now I haven't quite mastered the fall off material yet, so. But it's very useful in creating planetary atmospheres. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add a couple of points to this mix curve, so. As you can see, I've already added one. And we'll just drag it here. Make it a beigier smooth. And we'll make this one beigier corner. And drag this down as well. And we'll copy this color in. Paste. And then we'll make an opacity map of, the, of another fall up material. Maybe make it Fresnel. Nanner. 
never mind. Let's sw uh, switch it back to perpendicular parallel. And then self illumination as well. Apply that to our atmosphere. And now we'll have a quick render of our planet and the stars and everything. And that looks that looks pretty cool. That does look pretty cool. Let's get a close up view of it. Yeah, yeah, that's not bad at all. If I do this on myself. Okay, next up we're going to be creating uh, a sort of a lighting rig for our planet. So, um, what we want to do is we want to create a standard skylight. Just drag and drop it anywhere you want. For the skylight parameters, set it to 0.4. Set the multiplier to 0.4. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our material editor take the color from our nebula copy it and then paste it into the sky color and then in our advanced lighting settings we're going to use the light tracer plugin rays per sample we're going to set this down to 45 because the more rays per sample we have the longer render times we can get and uh, I'm not sure how much time I have left in this tutorial <laughs> but um, Let's do a quick render of this. And that's probably going to take a couple of seconds, so just be patient. It does get some very cool results when you um, add an additional light to it, so we're going to be doing that next, as well as creating a camera view. Do 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 do. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and that's turning out to be pretty sharp. Or something. <laughs> yeah, not bad. Not bad. So, let's add one final touch. Now we're going to be creating some lighting and a camera angle. First I'm going to create the camera angle. So, object type, target camera. Just place it somewhere. In your perspective view, left click, camera, camera 1. You can create a free camera if you want to. I'll just drag the target like so. That looks pretty good. Oops. Now we're going to add an Omni light. And these are very good for suns and whatnot, so. I'm gonna drag it right here. Now the sun light is going to be our main light, so. I'm gonna switch the shadows to area shadows and I'll give this a hint of yellow. Now to create our sun effects, what we need to do is just go into effects and add an effect. Uh, choose lens effects, glow, use source color to 100, pick the light, the sunlight, I'm going to switch this to 1280 by 720 pixels to save some time. We should still get some pretty quality renders though. Yeah, that's looking pretty cool. And there's our sun. Now, the sun needs to be adjusted a little bit. Like, the glow needs to be a bit more intense. So, I'm going to turn on interactive. 
Max will automatically render this again. Unfortunately, that's something, there's nothing I can do about it. Though I wish there was. So I'll just let this render quickly. I said quickly! <laughs> now just click glow. We'll go down here. Set the intensity to 125. Eh, maybe 150. Set the size to, say, 10. Then we're going to add a second glow. This is going to be our ambient glow. So, intensity to 75. Source color to 100. And then the size to 500. And then uncheck glow behind. Maybe we can make this a bit less intense. Let's say... I want to say 45 here. That's not too bad. Maybe a bit less. Maybe 25. That looks pretty decent. So... Yeah, that's pretty much the basics of setting up a decent space scene in 3D Studio Max. Oh, I forgot to add a moon! So, let's do that right now. We'll create a second geosphere. Right in the view of our camera. Oops. And then, maybe... Place it here. Ooh, that's nice. Okay, we'll name this Moon. And while I'm at it, I'll rename my first geosphere Planet. Here's our Moon. Okay, new material. I'm gonna go back into my texture maps. I'm a very disorganized person here, so forgive me. Do we want surging? Wait for it to load. No, we don't want surging. How about sticks? Sticks looks good. I like sticks. Standard bump material. Set this to black. Show it in the viewport. Now let's have a look. Oh, there is one more thing. We need to add a second light. And this is basically going to... Um... Oh, hold on a second. I think I applied the wrong material to the wrong sphere. <laughs> uh, okay. Let's reapply that. And our sticks material to the moon. There we go. That looks better. Now, as I was saying before, Let's add a and this is our second light, which, which I believe is called the fill light. So, I'm going to name this fill. And this basically um, simulates, this basically simulates real sunlight here in, a th in the uh, 3D world. So, I'm going to drag this up just a bit further into our scene. Everything looks pretty decent as it is, but I might increase the intensity just a tad. Yeah, that looks good. I'll turn on the area shadows. Now let's have a render of this. That's already looking pretty snazzy. And there you have it. Beautiful, isn't it? This is our final result. Um, now, as I said, I'm going to be re I'm going to be providing uh, links to the uh, texture maps as well as the uh, KY Trails plugin. 
So, so just look in the description for them. And um, all right, that's pretty much it for the basics of setting up a space scene in three D Studio Max. I'm Chris. <laughs> I pronounced my own last name wrong. What kind of impression does that leave on me as a tutor? <laughs> um. <clears throat> I'm Chris Krasnuski, and this has been an episode of How the Hell Did I Do That? Take care. Bye-bye.